All right, let's talk about identifying quadrilaterals. Um, first, the, sort of the important thing with this lesson is just to make a guess of what the quadrilateral probably is based on just a quick sketch or a quick view of whatever the picture of the quadrilateral is. And then once you have a guess for it, see if you can prove that guess correct or not. Um, and in order to prove it correct or not, you need to be able to reference your definitions of different quadrilaterals. So we're going to review those really quick and then we'll uh, apply them to the example questions. So for as a review, we have our first set here, which is parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has exactly two pairs of parallel sides. So it has one set of sides that are parallel, or in other words, have the same slope, and then a second set of sides that are parallel or in other words, have the same slope. It doesn't say anything about the links of either pair. It just says that the sides, the pairs of sides have to be parallel. Now, if you have a parallelogram with four 90 degree angles, in other words, if they match, if they come together at right angles, like so, here, then you have not just a parallelogram, but specifically a rectangle, which is a parallelogram with four 90 degree angles. Our second sort of classification here is a rhombus, and our rhombus is a shape with four congruent sides. So it doesn't say anything about angles, but it does say that all four sides have to be the same length. So if you have a shape with four sides that are all the same length, like so, dink, 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 then it qualifies as a rhombus. It doesn't say anything about the angles, we don't care. It's a rhombus if all four sides are the same length. Now a square is a subclassification of a rhombus. It's a rhombus that has exactly four matching angles. Now in order to have matching angles, they have to be right angles. So essentially it's a rhombus with four right angles for the corners. So all four sides then are the same because it's a rhombus and all four corners are 90 degrees, then it's a square. Our third classification is a trapezoid. Trapezoid has one and only one pair of parallel sides. Now remember the parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid only has one pair. So it's got one two sides that are directly across from each other with the same slope, and then two other sides which do not have the same slopes. So um, qualifies as a trapezoid if it only has one pair of parallel sides. Now if your trapezoid happens to have a pair of parallel sides and the other two sides are congruent, exactly the same length, while well, my sketching is just getting worse and worse as time goes on, isn't it? Sorry about that. And the other two sides are the same length, like so. Then you have not just a regular trapezoid, but specifically an isosceles trapezoid. So if it's a trapezoid and those other two sides are the same, then it's isosceles. Our final figure here is a kite. A kite has two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So we have one pair of sides here that are adjacent, meaning that they're next to each other. They need to be congruent. And then we have another pair of sides, like so, that are also adjacent to each other. They need to be congruent as well. And if you have a kite, in other words, a four-sided figure with two pairs of congruent sides that has a kick in, like this, where the, one of the angles is concave instead of convex, then you have a sort of a subclassification of a kite called a dart. So let's take that information and apply it to our example questions.